Hello, welcome to the Lean Into Artcast, a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on different topics that pop up, uh, come to mind, or we encounter in our pursuits in communicating visually. We think hard about visual storytelling, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. The other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I am a uh, user experience and game designer. Good to see you again, Rob. Good to see you again, Jersey. It's been a lot of fun having uh, guests on the show and uh, delving into their, um, you know, their the, the their work, the things they do, how they think about it. We recently had um, uh, Hannah O'Neill on the show and talked animation. That was uh, just last week's episode. That was super fun. Um, and uh, then re recently before that, we had uh, Dave Say of davidsay.com. We talked about um, the, I mean, the, his, the, the goal, goal planning and how Dave, how David thinks. And he's a, uh, so it, it, we, we, we like to in, invite others on the show to think with us and, um, and to, explore topics that that um that i mean sometimes it's it's all um uh it all depends on like what what we're what we're trying to what we're trying to explore and who and how how new are we to them and they to us and so we do different kinds of episodes we then then here we are um it just just you and me now um uh, talking about a, uh, a, let's see, a topic that, that comes up from time to time and, um, but maybe at a different angle. Um, so what do you think this topic is? What do you think of it? <laughs> what do I think this topic is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even remotely coy, Rob. <laughs> We, no. You know that I know, and I know that you know that I know. Uh, so yes, we've been you know having some really awesome discussions lately with some uh, very intelligent and uh, hard thinkers and mm. hard workers. Uh, so now it's time to think about, after thinking about working and thinking so hard, how do you make that sustainable? How do and and the way that we investigate this is through episodes we've been calling reading watching playing what are we reading what are we watching what are we playing but you put an extra different spin on this one this time rob in in highlighting the um sustainability aspect in terms of like how did these habits nourish us um i was just having a discussion the other day with uh, another comic creator where um we were kind of lightheartedly sharing war stories of people misunderstanding what we do you know um Whoa, wait a minute you you when you make comics you write and draw um wow that seems like a lot of work like well yeah it is you know it's like but like there's misconceptions and there's simplifications and caricature caricatures that we form in our heads in order to understand the world we have to simplify it and so on whatever so like we don't necessarily understand nor should we necessarily at the outset understand everything that is required in order to do any specific task to be fair but as we were sharing this war story um or these war stories it I forget which one of us said it, but it occurred to us to say like, but shouldn't our jobs have a lot of complexity to it? Because all that complexity and all that learning that one does feeds into it and makes you better at it, right? So that's all to build on this idea that reading, watching, playing, yes, it's diversion. Yes, it's recharging. But I'm betting there's something to looking hard at that too to say, yes, by doing this, I am adding to the various tools and... Um, uh idea bank um inspiration um some kind of resource to draw upon when making new things later hmm. yeah that's and um and e exploring that from 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 time to time like i i think we've we've the reading watching playing format is um is a kind of like occasionally recurring episode that um, does it does exactly like what you described, but like, and, and, and also this, the, the sustainable angle, I think has come up in conversation before, but, um, hopefully, um, 
we'll you know we'll uh, find some some additional additional things that that are um uh yeah you, you mentioned sustainable but um it it's uh, we phrase like when we when we take breaks from our from our creative works and we're our privilege of working on the kinds of things that we work on um i mean sometimes that that there there's a tension in um well you know you you just get to you 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 make stuff and um and it's fun you like what you do right um and i tend to yes okay yeah and and yeah as and as do i and also just um i there's there's an assumption that when you when you get pleasure from the your your primary work then um ah do what you love and then you'll never need a day off <laughs> yeah that sure exactly so wh why are why are you recharging and stuff like that and i i, I, I forgot, did i get that wrong is it like do what you love and then you'll never hate your job i forgot how that exp that old bromide goes but but yes that's yeah. the idea is that if you love doing it it's never work so yeah and um right so there there's a there's a few ways where where um that yeah let, we're 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 going to unapologetically talk about what we what we do for fun and then um uh, then still not apologize for it and look at how it feeds how it does feed in even though it doesn't have to do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life thank you shadowing tronics <laughs> thank you troy uh, that thank goodness for the chat okay so that's the bridge let's 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 head on over to uh the, the first part of the show and let's get how about we get rob fired up Maybe. there we go <laughs> this is the first part of the show where we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and playing. This is on the ground. This is what the what, what does it look like when we're doing the thing that we're doing. So, what are we reading, watching, and playing? Do you want to go first, Rob? Uh, yeah. So, I've been getting a lot of mileage out of um, YouTube, um, the, the YouTube family subscription that I that I um that I, I, I set up for myself and my family, right? Um, I experimented with YouTube Red for a little bit before that and really liked not, ha not seeing um, the, the commercial before, like e all sorts of interesting links that people would share. And um, YouTube is such a huge source of, of um, content that that I visit like a lot m many times a day, and uh, re th then they're then they've then they've created this focus. Oh my gosh! And it's and it's open for um, artists of all types. So if you publish music, I could listen to it there, Jersey. Um, if um, it, it, you know, like YouTube uh, is obviously it's it's like an it's it's an open platform, which is a contrast. Uh, compared to you know things like um, the the steps it takes to get something published through um, iTunes iTunes and through um, even Amazon Music and uh, it's it's definitely a world where like independent people can publish on a lot of platforms and whatnot but YouTube it it, it has everything so it has like the just Think, like it has music that people record from video games. It, ha it has music that people record from, um, e you know, video intros and you know movies of the past. Uh, um, it has uh, all, all, pretty much all artists from all time, and, and it's, and it's. Uh, um, I've I don't I don't think in recent times I've ran into anything it's it's missed. Like oh, there's this um you know there's there's there are quirks right where i listen to uh music on um 
so so they have uh, YouTube, YouTube music, um, but also Google music, and they kind of work similar, but Google music is a little more about like, like that, that art, that, that's, that's more the professional albums that people publish, but YouTube is, you know, it has everything. So where, where am I going with that? Um, I, I've been, um, enjoying, uh, just jumping around, listening, just listening to stuff that it, uh, it encapsulates like all sorts of interests I have, like anything from, um, video game music and to, um, hair metal over time. Um, like all sorts of flavors of metal, right? Um, like, uh, I've, I started a, um, a station for myself, um, based on the song, uh, by Dokken, Breaking the Chains mm. and, mm -hmm. um, things like, um, you know, old, old tunes that like, that, that were around when I first started, when I first started playing guitar and like would, would, um, get together with friends to jam you know that that would be a common ground where um you know someone would um uh like rat right is another one uh and and it's just uh so it's it's good nostalgia fun and um uh then uh, there are um like more more recent bands like Arch Enemy that I've been listening to. Um uh it's uh the the a song from uh from them that I've that I've joined a lot is uh The World Is Yours and uh that's I think that's off their their recent album but but um that and that's the 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 negative I can say about um about the service is that it's um sometimes i i don't know who i'm listening to i i may um, i'm getting better about thumbing thumbing up and down uh artists and fine-tuning stations but um so it's like the service overall is is understanding my taste better and it behaves different than like things like pandora um, Pandora, whenever, whenever I've, um, given it enough thumbs up or thumbs down, it basically plays like a tiny sliver of music, but YouTube will still keep exploring. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and something else will get woven into the list and other lists will, um, cross pollinate based on, based on like, well, my tastes. And so the more I've explored my tastes, um, the my tastes general just jump in and listen has morphed a ton and um yeah it's so um it's a, a an amazing hodgepodge of lots of stuff but it's a fun but it, that is a fun reflection too um yeah i've talked in the past on this i think on this very show uh not this very episode but the series of shows uh, about how i've used youtube in the past as my podcast recommendation engine like i look up okay i'm gonna hear christopher hitchens talk for a little while and then like that says okay well if you like that then here's like five other things you may like and i'm like okay well i don't know about that let's find out about that and go down this rabbit hole of um which can sometimes lead to really unexpected and unpleasant places <laughs> It's like, oh, uh, but other times it could lead me into realms that, like, well, we just did uh, an episode on um, research not long ago, right? Um, and, like, mm -hmm. once you start digging into something and you start learning that what you never knew in the first place, uh, what you didn't even know you wanted to know, uh, that's a lot of fun. But anyway, yeah, so you're saying it's even better with YouTube Red, YouTube Red family. Yeah, and I, I think uh, your your um, your playlists were, were have been an inspiration because I I have I've been curious um, about like oh YouTube is YouTube has a music place YouTube has and and that's um, and then I I've you know eventually trying it out when it was um, it's it in in YouTube Red form um, app on my phone and that kind of thing right I notice um, the YouTube Red app it. I I use it a little more than the Google Music app because it 
it does bring in the more independent content, um, mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. um, more naturally where it's, it's like, if I want to start a station that's based on like, like any, um, any published music, I'm, it, it seems like the, the Google music app, it's, um, it, it works better with that overall. Um, you know, you may get different versions of an album, like, uh, and albums that are, I don't know, like odd, odd additions. Um, recently I, I saw a, um, a version of, um, Metallica kill Em all with like 42 songs on it or something like that. And I'm like, there was never a version of this. That, that was not a CD, right? <laughs> this was, this, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Kill them all. Um, I, I mean, had had a couple of editions. Um, one of them was uh, when it was first recorded, and then it got re-released, and it got re-released with a couple of covers on it. But that was like, i you know, not 42 songs. Um, so you know, like all these other services have quirks, and I'm I'm a I'm a citizen of multiple services, and um, it's just that uh, I I keep getting pulled into the the um, the more inclusive, wider world. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not and another thing that that has tempted me about YouTube Red in the past is the offline listening. So. Which I mean, because like if I'll be in the middle of like a really interesting talk or discussion on a topic, and it's like, oh well, I gotta go, I gotta go, you know, pick up band from work, or I gotta go off to a class or something. Um, I don't want to use my data plan to be streaming YouTube videos in the car. Um, so what I do then, like my workaround for now, until I, you know, have the the wherewithal to pay for that subscription, is um, I have uh, a Huff Duffer account where I, I will make a podcast out of like, like, or I want to listen to this on the road. Okay, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab these three videos, turn them into uh, MP3 files, and then I can listen to them on my phone on my way to class. I've mentioned this service before, but it's H-U-F-F-D-U-F-F-E-R.com. And it just, it can grab the audio from any web page and turn it into a, an RSS feed for you to listen to after the fact. It's an awesome tool. And one that, another one that I learned about from you. It's I don't uh, remember where I learned about it. Um, yeah, it, and um, let's see. So that that the offline music is handy, and it um, the you can um, you know of course download playlists and albums and whatnot um, in either app, but the YouTube Red app that's the one that like it it will it essentially automatically makes a mixtape for you. And like that, that playlist that says, um, oh, you're, let's see what, like your, your favorites or something like that. Um, and, uh, do, 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 trying to open up the app, um, YouTube music, gosh, darn. Yeah. So YouTube music and then Google music. So they renamed the YouTube red music app to YouTube music. Um, and then it's my station, a station built for you. That's the default. Um, the, um, sort of the, the primary thing when you open up the app and, uh, then you can scroll for more and including like things you've listened to your history or whatever. So this, and, and then the other, th oh shoot, the other thing it does, the versions it downloads can be video or music. And so, so if you're like, I just want to get the music stream to me, you can, you can, uh, just push a button. Have you tried doing that with like talks or anything yet? Hmm. Like, would it just give you the audio Everything's... version of like, say a Ted talk or something? Um, I can, uh, tech talks. One way to find out kids. Exactly. In a live demo. Uh, Ted talk procrastination, uh, TEDx Rotterdam. So I'm going to um, audio only, only music. Yeah, it's it's doing audio only music, all the audio only mode. Okay. Yeah. And then no video. Okay, cool. It's just the still, it's the thumbnail. 
And you can put the screen to sleep when you listen to it that way too, right? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, it's, um, I, I found it incredibly, incredibly handy. handy. Um, what, um, what have you been listening to or reading or watching? Well, let me pull up my screen share again. And uh, I have been, I made a visit to my old friend LibriVox. Do you remember LibriVox? I know I, I'm forgetting about LibriVox. It's been years since I've talked about it on the show, but yeah. it's a uh, it's it's free public domain audiobooks. So it's like a, a community sourced project where just every anybody can submit their own audiobooks, like based on a public domain work. Um, so the narration, the narrator voices are you know kind of hit and miss because this is just crowdsourced. So you're not getting like you know Patrick Stewart reading the book, right? Uh, but on the upside, if you have trouble fitting more reading into your life as I do and have a lot of time to listen to things while you're drawing as I do. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And so I recently revisited an old favorite of mine, um, the life and adventures of Santa Claus by L Frank Baum, the guy who wrote the wizard of Oz. Um, and I think I told you about this off mic a while back, Rob, like it, it's, it's basically like Lord of the Rings meets the story of Santa Claus. So it's like, it's the story of how this young man became, Chris Kringle, Santa Claus, who delivers presents all over the world. But, like, there's these hunchbacked creatures called the Nooks that control all the animals of the forest. And there's these weird guys called the Aguas, which are, like, these invisible demon creatures who try to impede Santa's way. And there's uh, there's nymphs and there's elves and there's there's wind demons. <laughs> and it's super epic and big. And um, and there's there's even, like, a, he's, he's raised for a short time by a lion. Um, but anyway, <laughs> there's... You, it's it's a great book, and I, I I I forgot. I just went back and listened to it again. And I forgot that like he's like so vegan, like the Santa Claus and L. Frank Baum's story is so vegan that he won't even build his house out of living wood. He ha he only takes fallen trees. He doesn't like to walk on grass. He's he's like almost like a Jane Buddhist. He only eats nuts and berries. He won't eat anything that was like he won't kill a thing to eat it. Uh, he has leather straps on his sleigh, but it was from a lion who died of old age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. <laughs> um, but anyway, I mean, it's. I just wanted to listen to some audiobooks. I didn't want to renew my Audible account right now. Um, and I listened to, re I re recently listened to everything that I had in my own collection. Um, I started digging through, uh, our public library has a uh, OverDrive partnership so we can borrow books through OverDrive. But even then, it's like only for like a little while. And um I really like that LibriVox is like, well, I can download it, listen to it as long as I want, and then, you know, just get it off my phone when I'm done. So, L I B R I V O X dot org. Yeah, it sounds like a great resource that, uh, that, I don't know. I'm glad you, glad you brought up again. Um, and that book, Lord of the Rings meets the Santa Claus story. <laughs> um, and, uh, so and that are those books like um like sh easily easily found and shareable on Lib librivox i mean is that you know i don't know how shareable they are i should check well let, let me just do a quick search for um life and adventures of santa claus because i mean they got a twitter icon and an rss icon right on their web page let me i'll do a screen share and i'll see what we can do here um Okay, so here's the book, right. The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. I can mm -hmm. download it. I can subscribe by iTunes. There's an RSS feed. There's a torrent feed. Mm. Um, public domain, author, title, genre, subject, language. Can I share it? I guess I could just share the, the, the URL, it, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's free. And, and it looks like um, you don't need an account? No. No. Like, I just, you just download the app on your phone. I can even play some of the audio from this. You can listen to it right this here. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. And for more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. So, it said right on the main page, like when you go to their main page, uh, 
the front page says free public domain audiobooks read by volunteers from around the world. So there's like a volunteer button and then there's a listen button. So you can mm -hmm. submit your own if you if you uh feel like sitting down. Like the 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 Life and Adventures of Santa Claus book that I was listening to, you just heard the lady's voice. Like she's not use she's using like probably a USB mic because at some points during the read you can hear like background traffic noise and stuff, right? So mm -hmm. it it is what it is, but it's pretty great. I mean, to have access to a whole bunch of public domain works, so like Sherlock Holmes, uh, Dickens, and you know, it's a great resource for listening to more stuff. Yeah, I, it, and it's um, what a great what a great counter to um, the the ex expensive world of of Audible, and um, because I I mean I I love Audible I. I'm me too. Yeah. Been a subscriber for, you know, number of years and uh but you know at this at, you know you you get you get content that is um protected like that and you think, well, I mean, I've I I've um I've bought all these books. What happens when um you know, I I don't I don't keep my membership going, membership going, and that kind of stuff, and uh, that's uh, that's tough. Or it's like, like, like even if there is a workaround, um, then uh, you know it, it's it's not it's not going to be as easy or flexible as like here's a link and there's a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Yeah, that, I mean, because when I loaded up LibriVox on my phone again, I was like, oh, I don't remember my password. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I don't even need one. <laughs> like, I, I, I just started downloading books, right? Um, which mm -hmm. means, like, it makes it trickier if you don't have an account because then, like, oh, well, where's my library? Like, but, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a very casual user, so that hasn't been a problem for me. It's like I just bip mm -hmm. in when I'm like, I, I want to listen to something right now. I don't want to do a whole lot of searching. I'm just, like, do a search for Charles Dick and see what I get, you know? That's, so uh, that's awesome. You want to talk about what you're watching or reading? Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I recently, uh, let's see, a, a couple members of uh, my family, we, re, we read uh, Wrinkle in Time. I went through the uh, audiobook. And uh, when, uh, when a couple of us uh, finished it, we we went to um we went to the movie on opening day oh and um yeah that was uh that, that, that's a, that's a lot of fun it's like when you when you have the chance to um re i've read wrinkle in time when i was um i very young i yeah i mean i was probably um maybe maybe the age of my my eldest like eight or nine right maybe oh, wow. i was 10 right and uh and i remember liking it and uh then not not uh not following up right with it where i i, I think it had um there are books that were that are adjacent to it that um that i that i that i haven't read that I, that um because anyway it's because of the afterward and then the uh in the um on in the audio audiobook which is mm -hmm. which has um fascinating history in it in and of itself i i i've i really enjoyed some uh some extra historical context for um for what's what's essentially if if um Anyone who is is um, is not familiar, Wrinkle in Time is um, it's it's an all ages story that has um, it. Uh, there, there are let's see. There is uh, there is science and there is fantasy, but it's not. Um, it's not. Um, is it for uh, the the book didn't didn't um, hyper hone itself to one particular audience and one particular genre? 
And um, that uh, it, it reminded me of of um, great classic um, cl like like classic science fiction from um, the um, TV shows like Twilight Zone and similar. And uh, that uh, that that kind of like really really good really good imagination situation. And, um, uh, that's, and without spoiling anything, that's, that's, that's what it, um, that's what the, that's what the book was. And the movie, I think, um, it, it didn't, it didn't have to do a lot of, um, talking down or, or updating because it already was fairly, um, fairly timeless with maybe, um, a couple of things because of the time it was written that you might think about um, uh, gender gender roles and stuff like that where mm. um, there were yeah so um, ref refinements it's sort of in in that way but nothing um, uh yeah it was um my my uh my 8 year old loved it both and uh and i th i thought both were really good great so like the the movie satisfies if you're a fan of the book i think so um and uh what's funny is is i think i think disney was um not sure what was going to happen so like we saw it opening night and they handed out um surveys and i was like how am i going to fill out a survey like and i you know for one of one of the one of the learning mechanisms i use for being being a user experience designer is um surveys right they are you you may come up with uh, some research questions that can fit um, asking people stuff and getting their getting their reactions um, and emotions, but it's it's not it's not a um, it, as a research instrument it's not it's not like a it's not as good as, as, as like, if you sat down and you just talk with some, like, instead of handing out 50 surveys, if you talk to like five to, to 10 people before and after, and even the, the, the same five or 10 people, you would gain like greater, um, like, like we do on the pod, like ability to explore a topic and, and, and ask, ask why, and try to, you know, get into the perspective of this person and have your own, you have two layers, like as a researcher, you, you have like the questions you're asking that, that you're, and, 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 um, asking in a non-leading consistent way to you know, like any participant, but then there's, um, you have, um, your own observations as, as a researcher where, if someone is 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 laughing or or you know wiping uh, tears of joy out of out of their eyes, you you need to like take note of that, and and or if they're you know talking if they have uh, gritted teeth or you know they're 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 stressed or sweating or whatever and you know you just you get better info than than the survey that. On a scale from one to five, five meaning very happy, one meaning not happy at all. How would you rate your experience watching this film? Um, there were about 14, <laughs> 24, 24 ish questions, each with um, potentially from with multiple multiple things to answer. And you know, it starts out being demographic and like, are you male or female? What's your age? And so uh, that's. Yeah, and that's like you don't ask that anymore, you know. Like, like you just you don't do binary, you know, male female stuff anymore. Whatever. So, old form probably, you know, cut and paste. People doing the best they can with uh, tight timelines and stuff. But, um, but 
Yeah, but it, it goes on as being still pretty binary. Are you a parent of a child 11 or under? If yes, check the age groups of any children that apply, that are with you today. And of course it says, are they boy or girl? And, um, but this, this is, um, so you think about like, this is a research instrument to helping pe help people who are tr probably trying to market, market the movie. And um, the, like, it's a symptom of, of decision makers in an industry, whatever, anyways. Um, and I, and I was like, yes, I'll take one. And I kept it. <laughs> I didn't turn it in. And, and the, the first part was like, before you saw the movie, um, like classifying you, what you knew, how you got here and all that stuff. And then, then afterward it was like, what, um, what did you, what did you like best? And, uh, it's not it's not a nothing you like they didn't learn nothing they didn't learn anything from me or or, or my my um my child but um but they did like they, they they did get a few handed in um and uh like they were trying to learn also like which was uh which who the following was your favorite character and i think like like you think of like I, as a research instrument, like this is trying to um, find like demographic associations between characters people identify with and what they thought, and their then then their 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 framing of the movie before and after. Um, anyway, and um, and and like, what did they like? Um, oh, and I'm guessing that there was a. Uh, there were differences in showings because one of the questions is before the movie, did you see a thank you from the video, from the, the from the director? Right. And uh, we did. So mm. some audience probably didn't. So I, they're, they're testing stuff. Mm. They're testing. So that there, it has, gosh, there's funny. So they're actually, they were doing some AB testing or, you know, multiple scenario testing. Anyway, it was fascinating. I, I, um, I've not had that happen in any showing I've ever gone to. So, but I don't think I've been to a movie on opening weekend in a long time. Um, cool. So you get like double entertainment. You get to see a, a cool movie that you really enjoy. Plus, you get to get a sense of how Disney's doing research or the theater is doing research on how their movies are doing. Exactly. So I got to research the research. <laughs> I like uh, well, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad that your daughter liked the movie as well. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, what am I watching? Oh, um, let me screen share again. I don't know if you have Amazon Prime or not, Rob, but um, I do. And uh, so I've been watching a lot of Prime video and something I came across and I was a little skeptical at first. Uh, do you remember uh, the Tick cartoon and comic book from the 80s and 90s? Yeah, I um I would occasionally buy the Tick comic book, and uh, I, and I remember that there was a sh there, there was a, a sitcom for the Tick that actually there was a cartoon as well. Yeah, the cartoon came first. That was in like yeah. the late '80s, early '90s, and uh, then there was like a few years back they tried to do a live action TV series, which mm. didn't do that great. And then so like when they were said it, they announced again like hey we're making a new tick live action show I was like oh here we go because I didn't really enjoy the last live action one now the premise if you haven't seen it most of us are familiar with it um, nervous accountant named Arthur gets his hands on this moth suit super suit that allows him to fly and finds himself inadvertently teamed up with this guy called the tick who's just head to toe blue with antenna who is nigh invulnerable and leaps from rooftop to rooftop. Very silly guy, but very, he's like, imagine all the morality of Superman, but with all, all the bravado of 1960s Batman, but with like, like a little bit more macho, right? Like, like a super macho 1960s Batman. So he's like really into like, like he, he like likes the uh, monologue and he'll say like, honk, if you love justice, Arthur, you know, um, <laughs> So he's, he's a character that I really enjoyed uh, growing up and uh, in, in my teen years and continue to enjoy as an adult when I revisit the cartoon. So I was a little skeptical about the live action show. And for anybody who's really familiar with the, with the character and the premise, 
and has not checked out the show, I will warn you that the Tick and Arthur are the only two characters that from the original comics and cartoons that show up in this, and they have pretty much like rebooted the entire cast. Um, and they made it much more HBO. It's like it's I would say it's rated R. There's a lot of language, and there's like some like on-screen murders in the show which hmm. at first too i was like i don't know how i feel about this but like as i got a little further and i was like actually this is this really works for live action because now the tick stands out so much more as like a really pure clean good guy in this world of murderers you know um and like when there's a scene where arthur's trying to you know hide from these bad guys and so he like goes into a convenience store and he's trying to steal a poncho and like the tick gets into an argument with him he's like come on this is the heroes don't do this you don't steal you know and it's like it's just a poncho right it's like a three dollar poncho uh <laughs> stuff like that like and, uh you know arthur I, murder is not cool <laughs> but the, the other change they made is that they gave arthur kind of an arc so he's not the show doesn't start with him being like, oh, I've got a super suit and I'm ready to be a superhero now. He's like growing into the role. But um, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this. I was really surprised. I liked it an awful lot. Uh, and hmm. I think it's like, uh, how many episodes are in the series? I'll find out right now. Uh, looks like there's 12 episodes in the series so far uh, on Amazon Prime streaming. Uh, if there's other ways to get it, uh, if you enjoy the kinds of superhero uh knock them ups like I do, then might be worth checking out. But definitely not something to watch with young people. Um, mm. Some very intense stuff that happens in it. But for some reason, it works in this absurdist kind of superhero world. I don't know. Do you even, do you remember like like characters like Dinosaur Neil? He was like a guy who worked at like a dinosaur museum who gets infected with a toxin that makes him grow into a giant dinosaur. Or like Chairface Chippendale who had a chair for a head. <laughs> he was like a super villain mastermind with a chair for a head. So like uh, that's I the kind of I, stuff that... I think I remember Chairface Chippendale. Uh and uh there was someone who had a happy mask and a and um uh a chainsaw hand. That, uh, yeah, that's... I think so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's uh so yeah, I, I that's the that's a comic and that I that I bought in the in the nineties and, and uh I, I laughed. The man eating cow. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen the look in the eye, that that look in the eyes of a critter one time before. That cow's tasted human blood. What? He's a man eater. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean it's um the I remember the the I remember the comic was was fairly fairly violent too, but like um it, violent and like punch him up violence, but not like yeah. like there's like a, an on screen throat slitting in one episode of the new tick show, which again wow in the context of this absurdist hyper and it's almost like an indictment of like 90s grim and gritty comics at some point they're like, so like there's a character who shows up named overkill when he first shows up uh like he shows up to like this doesn't spoil very much but he shows up to like save arthur from some thugs in an alleyway and when he like slices him with a knife like gallons of blood splash out of the guy's chest like like um oh what was that fist of the north star anime right it's like it's way over the time it's like it's like if a 13 year old wrote that scene and he he talks like this you know and he's got like all black head to toe skull face you know but he's a good guy he's just an intense good guy you know and so of course the tick instantly dislikes him you know it's like i, I keep that knife machine away from everybody you know um it's it's really good there's there's a scene midway in the season where they fight in a park where the tick and overkill have to fight a bunch of thugs and it's just magnificent uh watching the tick try to both stop the bad guys and protect them from overkill at the same time <laughs> yeah i it sounds like um yeah it sounds like a good problem like the the characters are um you know prob problems being you know brushing up against each other and um that um that's so that's 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 awesome um the cast of characters with the relationships like um uh like like you like you've taught on the on our show and um and uh in your workshops uh overkill also his partner is a boat a sentient boat named danger boat who is a boat who identifies as a human male uh but a homosexual human male but he's kind of confused by this because he's a boat and homo means same so stuff like there's humor like that throughout the entire uh series uh <laughs> I, again, I was just surprised at how much I enjoyed it, given that it's so uh, intensely violent. But 
Hmm. Anyway, hmm. Um, is it time to move on to the second part? Is there any like? Do you want to like sneak in one more reading, watching, playing before we head on to the second half of the show? Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, um, oh, I haven't been like, playing anything new, so I'm wondering what you're, you're playing. playing. Oh, playing. Um, yeah, uh, I have not been playing a lot new, but um, I I think I, I I waxed on about my excitement about the motorcycle um quest and um the the coda to that is is i i um the quest that quest is 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 a different game it's not zelda really right not not breath mm. of the wild zelda it is honestly i mean like for someone who is is super duper into the um the the perfection kinds of games like uh like a dark like dark souls that kind of thing because normally like you you work hard in zelda you get you get more uh heart containers by um by uh, by uh solving the, the the puzzles and stuff in temples and then you um you can you also in the through the same mechanism you get more endurance so so the normal play of, of of the game is well you are 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 doing you're you're dealing with trade-offs of the resources that you have but like you and you get in deep in in, in as far as new problems to manage like you can be just walking through the woods and there's a sleeping giant and you're like oh uh yeah i'm pretty close to this and then then a the monster shows up and is like fight me right by the giant's foot and you're like ah and, and like fight fight and the giant wakes up and uh then it's time to fight a giant and <laughs> uh, and that that's and and you're in in that form of the game you are like um you're uh if you've if if, if you've been putting in if you just start the game and you end up in those situations which is possible but not likely because like you get stronger as you explore and the, the harder stuff is like further out as you as you explore but it's possible to 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 be a, a busy bee and go off in a direction and get get deep into territory that you that's trouble but if you you can get out of that territory in the normal in the, in the normal game like you, if you get in over your head and especially if you've been building your way up you can you can manage situations with the resources you have like um like if you have a uh, an okay bow and 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 um armor and whatever um if you've the harder you've worked and you've you've powered up all these different things or have found like tough tough weapons all the better to to like squeak through these the those situations in strategies you've you've developed the motorcycle quest which is um called like the the, the champions um the champions uh quest champions tale um you you when I when I t talked about this before, I was basically t checking stuff off my list to to be able to go to this quest, and that there's like there's a point that's semi far in the game, but you don't have to complete the game, and then you're allowed to go on these quests. Okay, fine. So you you go to this the the place where you start you start the quest, and you are essentially given a weapon that can can destroy anything in one hit but now you too can be destroyed in one hit. So all those skills that, that I, you have, you know, and, and if, if, you've, if you've been like that style of perfectionist, you're probably fine at this point. You're like, you just, you- You're ready to be one punch man. Yeah, you are one punch man. Oh gosh. Oh, I've been rewatching one punch man too. And like, uh, I, I I go back for really like, like some some reading watching playings. I I have um I have things that I go back for for nourishment that are comfort food and One Punch Man is a f delight. It's a joy. I I love practically every moment of of uh, all the episodes of, of that that little series. So right anyway, I I I tried on on the on that that quest for the motorcycle. I tried for a a, a few weeks. And, and I, I gave up. 
that's the that's and and so like my 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 uh i i don't know if i'll ever go back to it because though um there's really you know you like you just knowing the setup of that of the that quest the to, to get the motorcycle it's a series of challenges that you can never get hit so i that's not how i've played like like uh it's that that's why i mean it's it's sort of a it's a different game and i see the i see and i i've i know people that love that kind of game but um yeah then so basically my my go-to relaxing game was like not relaxing anymore <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah right. yeah that's i'm that's, that's that's not a type of player that appeals to me but i have had friends who are that type they, they want that level of challenge um i read about i read about people who do like metroid speed runs where it's like they're just trying to shave off two seconds on a speed run, I'm like, wow, you know, it's like, I, yep, that is, it's cool that it can be entertaining in that way too, but that is not what I show up for, you know, to find every conceivable trick. And like, and it really depends on you, like never bumping into the wrong thing, right? In order to break those records. Which is a learnable skill. And once you've, and especially once you appreciate a game a lot, you can, you, you can, you have enough familiarity to see like, I think I know what I have to do to, to, you know, get that skill. And I, I or, and you, or you, or you're like, I don't know if I could ever because it, because it takes like, um, a capacity to like, I mean, potentially remap like everything you like about the game and, um, and how you relate to it. But, uh, that, that's, 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 Oh my God! Speed run, speed run is a perfect, perfect example. Like, yeah, yeah, because I can I can survive different. You know, I I've I've solved different Mario games. I've you know, but I couldn't speed. I don't speed run. You know. No, I, I mean, and this it's a different way to engage with the game itself because now you're trying to like also hack the game. Like it's like the only way to speed run Metroid under a certain time is like bypass a whole bunch of power ups that like were designed to be part of the. The, the journey through the game so you're showing up to mother brain at the end with like not all your stuff you know so yeah it's it's a, it's it's rethinking and reacquainting yourself and i can totally see how that would be a fun way to eke out more life out of the game right so. totally yes absolutely so uh, and that's and through one mechanism you have players doing it naturally and the other mechanism you have um <clears throat> the provider of the game saying like this is this this experience uh, can be deeper here let's let's invite you on these these new quests so all right you ready to take a break I am ready that's uh just thinking about that motorcycle <laughs> <sighs> you feel it you right, fill right. this gas tank with monster guts for real yeah well, and, and so like, like, um, monster guts, well, not there, monsters aren't real, but, um, they, uh, the, 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 the things that you encounter in the forest that you engage in conflict and when they, when they, when they perish, they leave stuff behind sometimes, you know, I see yeah, stuff for your motorcycle parts. Yeah. And, 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 but yes, that was and... the, that was the fuel. That's the, the fuel for the bike. They, they had it in their backpack. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. All right. <laughs> well, Rob, gets, Rob looks off wistfully and thinks about that motorcycle. Uh, we'll take a minute and 30 minutes to, or a minute and 30 minutes, a minute and 30 seconds to talk about some people who make this show possible. Those people happen to be the folks who support us on Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash lean into art is where you will find it. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote, as little as a dollar a month, whatever you can afford. That says, I believe in you guys. I believe in the work that you do. I want to thank five people who've been doing exactly that. First up is Tim F. Thank you, Tim, for believing in the show. Shane W. Smith, you can find Shane on Twitter at Shane underscore W underscore Smith. Thank you, Shane. 
Chris Watkins. Thank you, Chris, for believing in us and in the work that we do. And Ashley Knapp, longtime friend of the show, also LibriVox user, uh, at Control Alt Lee on Twitter. Thank you, Ashley. And finally, Spencer Hallam. Thank you, Spencer, for supporting the show. And if you want to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash lean into art where you will find all the shows that we make there's last week's episode with hannah o'neill but also look, i'm gonna zoom in right here look at this if you become a patron to lean into art you will immediately get access to as many as 44 patron only posts patron only why would it be patron only because we post our extra lean shows that we record in between these shows where it becomes an open mic post for only for leaners to listen to the discussion with me and rob and then talk about whatever they want in a thread on that post and you can join them once again the address is patreon.com slash lean into art thanks to everybody who has been supporting us there yeah thank you very much it means a lot to us all right so now it's time for some other music to bridge us over to the next section uh how about a little bit heavy duty so we're going to start thinking about habits and nourishment and keeping the, this, the work sustainable through taking these reading, watching, playing breaks. Where do you want to start, Rob? Um, ooh. Um, you, what are you, what are you, what do you, what's this about, um, uh, the bo bowling? Hmm? What about bowling? Bowling. Oh, you want to talk about bowling? Yeah, I just see it there. <laughs> on, your, on your list. <laughs> so okay, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody here watches uh, what follows me on Instagram. Uh, Jersey Droz, just my name. Um, I tend every Monday night. I post um, an art drop that I do when I go bowling. Uh, so I'm in a bowling league, and I have been for I think three years now. And uh, it's it it started out it started out because it's just like. It, my, my wonderful wife noticed that I tend to spend a lot of time in the studio and I socialize maybe when I go to comic conventions or when I do podcasts with my friends or like when I, uh, maybe a visiting artist is traveling through town, but I don't go out and just like go be social, right? I don't go clubbing or anything like that. Um, and when I got invited to be part of this bowling team with some people who are in like a coffee clash that I irregularly attend, I said, oh, and pushed me. She was like, you know, you really should, it'd be good for you. Um, and, and, it, and she even reminded me of like that that writer's notion of like you know writers need to go out into the world and meet characters and if you are part of a bowling league you're bound to meet some characters there and sure enough i mean that's like one of the things that um i've been getting uh, a lot of value out of getting exposed to different corners of ann arbor that i probably wouldn't bump into uh necessarily like in a social setting right it might seem at the grocery store but it's not gonna be something i have a conversation somebody I have a conversation with necessarily right um, but also I, I saw it as an opportunity when I was sitting there, you know, talking with my team and, and playing bowling. Um, I was like, you know, I'm here for like two hours. I could get a little tiny sketch in and I, and it'd be like a self-contained, I'm drawing this just for me. There's no agenda with this. I'm not trying to make something I'm going to build a story out of. I'm just being playful. And then I can like hide the art someplace in the bowling alley afterwards, you know, and then maybe, and I always try to hide it wherever, like there's stuff that kids interact with. Like if there's like, like a claw machine or something like that, like hopefully a kid will find it there. Um, but that itself became like a nice little exercise and a, uh, something to remind me that art is fun and by doing it in a fun, playful setting, and it doesn't have to be work all the time. Um, and then trying to, um, you know, with, with these art thing, these little art uh, exercises that I do, I'm always trying to like challenge myself in a very gentle way. So I say, you know, it's like, you may have noticed that most of the Boulder and Fleet uh, art drops that I've been doing are usually them just having like a quiet moment of friendship. It's not them fighting a monster. It's not them doing something awesome, dangerous and dynamic. It's not rocks flying through the air like I usually like to draw. It's like, okay, well, and it's, it, as I'm driving to the alley, I'm thinking about it. I was like, okay, what kind of cute thing could I have them doing this this week? You know, so like last week, it was like they're eating toast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that's been something that I've been doing as a habit. It's like I try to go every week. Uh, it's it's a way for me to punch out of work while still engaging with the work in a playful way. If that makes any sense. 
Yeah, I think it. I think it totally. Um, it does. I have. Um, I can. I mean, I can totally identify with. You know, you you carrying a, you know some some ability to produce art on you probably at all times. Um, being like so, sketchbook, little little pack of pens, little pack of you know markers or crayons, that kind of thing. And um, yet, gosh, it's 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 layered in that um, you have. It isn't it doesn't it have the the didn't doesn't it have a risk of like becoming actual work? Does you know, is it it's mm. uh um, um I suppose it could with except the it, it could become work except for the fact that the fact that I'm there with a bowling team and we're playing three games of bowling. I already have something else to attend to. I can't give this drawing my full attention. I can't. And there's a lot of rowdy noise all around. There's people cheering and, you know, high-fiving and things like that. It's not the ideal place to draw. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I actually enjoy the fact that it's reminding me to not be precious, right? And, and it's it's really tough to get the drawing done in the time that I have because I'm I'll be in the middle of a line and be like Jersey you're up oh sorry and you know and I got to drop everything and then go throw my bowl or whatever mm. you call it um <laughs> yeah I don't know all the terms yet <laughs> I've been doing this three years and I'm still like oh I got a spare that's bonus points right um but but yeah so so like the environment demands that I can't give the drawing my full attention. If I do give the drawing my full attention, then I'm being a bad teammate, right? Yeah, so. maybe, I, yeah. Um, well, I'm holding up the game. Hold on, wait, everybody just, everybody, don't anybody do anything while I throw it on this perfect line, you know? Yeah, so, it, yeah, that's that's the, um, you know, that that's an interesting, that's an interesting, um, like, so the the nur nourishing and it's uh uh oh, like what um cuz it, it it's it's clear from from like from what what you described like this it is totally a uh, um it it's it it fits in and it helps um helps with punching out but um but it's almost like it, it, it's it's punching out like but 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 keeping keeping warm for uh it's like it's like wearing the you're drawing your you're drawing sweatsuit because you're going to you're <laughs> going to go back to the drawing gym like yes yes that's a great way of putting it so nate marcel's in the chat was just asking like oh is this to alleviate the boredom between your turns not not really because like i'm having like perfectly wonderful conversations with all the people that i'm talking with on my team and on the other team and i'm getting to meet all sorts of new people which is great um it's more or less to like when i'm on deadline i love making comics a lot like a lot a lot and i think that's come through in the way i talk about them but when it's when you're under deadline and when you're really fighting to fit everything in in a day um it can become like work, right? And it's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's it's an intense thing, right? It's the difference between sprinting and jogging. Um, and it's when I can sit down and draw informally, um, it it reminds me of why I love doing it, like l losing myself in that for that process. <laughs> Nate wants to know what my average is. Uh, last week I did uh, my first game, I think it was 133. My second game was 144. 145 my last game was 131 is that good good for me <laughs> so i don't know what my average is uh that's funny i think it's my better, handicap's 98 handicap uh, is 98 i think how does that work right i don't remember <laughs> i just show up and roll the ball <laughs> oh. oh that's the privilege of, of you know like just engaging with it in the spirit of play is like, yeah, there's people who are like, they know how to like do the stance and they throw the ball with like the spin on it and everything. 
uh, I don't know how to do that. It's just I just show up because I like to be around people and to, to draw things. So, super. What cool. about you? Um, the habit you've been doing. I've um, I'm gonna t like tie into your um, your drawing your drawing habit and mention um, I've been uh, I've been doing warm up sketches recently. Um, uh, you know, because my my day to day does not necessarily require lots of drawing, and it it really varies. Like, am I am I helping out um, with? It depends on my my my. It, you know, like obviously, I I have um I have a day job. Opinions are my own, and all that, and um there's uh there's just times where like i i will draw and but but it for different reasons and it's and it's typically representative of ideas not not um not objects as they look in representationally right and even even like how um uh so so essentially drawing is like sketch note style symbols and stuff Right. That that's like that that might be like what I would normally deal with. But I go through I go through times where I'm not doing a lot of that either. Like and and um I like to um recently I went um uh because let's see, I, I had I had a big chunk of time as a as a collaboration with my um um as basically a gift from from my wife where I was able to work on uh, comics for pretty much a whole weekend. Right. And I, yeah. And I haven't, um, I haven't had that experience in quite some time. Um, and it was a reminder of, uh, Hey, wait a minute. I feel different when I draw and, um, like, And when I'm and and I, it's like I I do draw a fair amount like I, I've I've, but like not not like all day not like every day, and um and and so I recently having that that oh gosh, what the heck am I doing? I need to do this is, this is meditative for me. This is um, my uh, my my every like how i how how i see the world changes how i um how i feel changes um drawing is just super healthy to, for me to do and i i'm like i need to do that more so i'm I, even on those those days where um where i don't have like drawing as a task to accomplish at at any point except like you know okay now now i've got my comic started um at some point in the evening i'll be able to you know like chip away on a on a panel or whatever so i've got like what now i'm at i've got like three and a half pages done of an eight page mini comic oh that's great yeah and but but now i've and and, and it's like uh, i've just sitting down and, and doing some kind of warm-up in in uh in the beginning of the day is so um so uh helpful and centering and and focusing and relaxing and um and and um my and f and yet um uh firing f like uh, getting getting more of my brain engaged in in what I'm, what the, the, the day, the, the day I'm about to face and in not, and it doesn't take that much time. It doesn't take that much time. It's easy. It's fun. And, uh, I found it super helpful. Um, drawing, drawing without agenda or drawing with, when you're just following a plan that you've already worked out, right? Like, so I'm guessing with this eight page mini comic that you're, that you're drawing now, thumbnails are figured out, right? So, yep. You've already established like what are the poses, what are the shots, what are the is it close up, is it far away, is it a big panel, is it a small panel? So all that thinking, poof, done. Now you got to worry about it. It's just drawing it as best you can, 
which is like that's a whole other thing right that really does feel like that's where flow state really happens for me where i feel like i'm, I'm lost in it um i did some penciling this last week uh on a personal thing and i mean i had i had a really bad day last week and like emotionally just like a very mixed bag and not feeling awesome about uh myself or or like a lot of things and just having that thing to like sort of pour myself into right like i'm just gonna all i'm gonna worry about right now is drawing cats as best i can you know and really like focus with that like attend to that so much that like all the other stuff kind of vanishes for a little while um that's man i i am totally hooked on that um that's a, a that's a tough thing to give up right yeah and and um <sighs> It's not what I do typically to in, uh, engage in trade. And uh, then I, yeah, it's so easy to forget about like how. Um, it's, it's different when you have to engage in trade with it though, right? Totally. Like, sure. The, yeah. There's the which performative is part, aspect. 100% true. Like, yeah, yeah. Your, your example of the, um, the the bowling alley in contrast to your your um your other workload is um yeah that that does that that really does highlight it but um uh there's yeah i don't i it, it there's a um i i it, some drawing is better than no drawing in some way right so I, and I'm, I'm so that's why I'm trying to like draw parallels and compare a little bit in a, in a, in a, in a way that, you know, is, 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 um, is constructive. Um, cause, uh, yeah, it's being, being able to stay in touch with, with, um, with drawing is, I would say probably a, a little bit of a, a, a baseline that, um, that uh uh i don't know like because i'm talking about like doing doing warm-up drawing when um that's 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 like throwaway but it's like a part of my like day job right right Have you like, noticed i'm about to do stuff that that has nothing to do with with drawing like i may st and i i how does how does your relationship with the stuff you have to do after that change? Have you noticed any change? Um, yeah, I I um, I I feel um, calmer, more um, ready to um, ready to um, pivot on my feet and. Uh, um, Mm. Yeah, I it's it's not but I it's just a great it I I think some people might get the same thing from um like affirmations or if they you know like sitting there um uh, reminding yourself of your your mantra or what makes you feel good or whatever um it's it's a it's a it's a way to start it's a it's a way to start off on a on a foot that it's um it has so much um, natural um, uh, positive. Uh, if I'm hearing you right, yeah. I'm hearing that there's something very internal about this moment. Yeah. So it's it's sort of That's akin fair. to some kind of like like when you say like it's like an affirmation or like like a meditation you said it was meditative to do this it's like a moment to like sort of be in your own head for a little while before you go out and engage with the world right taking a breath before going engaging with other things is that what you're saying um yes and uh that's that's uh that's the kind of uh that's the kind of thing that that i think i i can habitually lose sight of where i may think that you know, it, like it's much like reading, watching, playing, doing something to nourish, doing doing something that is um, that's that's outside the 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 
the the list of tasks that you know seem to be the right things to do up ahead to meet all the commitments um but if you're if you're only about um hitting hitting that list of tasks to um you know as as like how you fill your time will like I, that that is what that that's what leads this stuff to to be like to be less sustainable for me um where um yeah how do i um yeah tuning in tuning into like um how i how i feel and um um so so things like um uh analog analog journaling right um what um this the, I, I yeah this is um that this i don't it's the, the the ongoing tension of of like how does um how does the stuff that that like you are that you do on the side that you that you do on the side of the side or and the um why like uh it i know like i lose sight of like how it helps or or and um yeah yeah uh the quest for efficiency is is a very distracting and beguiling thing right yeah. um we all talk about everybody's talked at one point or another i think about like the the, the satisfaction of scratching off that I, item off your to-do list you know mm -hmm. um I'm crushing it today. This is something that you were actually, you know, kind of rebelling against recently with, with like language like that. Uh, and I agree, you know, um, and in that pursuit, and, and, and I have been one of those guys who's like, I want to do every, I want to find as much value. I want to milk as much value out of everything that I do as possible. So like even my bowling night art drop is like, I turn it into an art drop so that I'm like, you know, getting some kind of function and use out of it. I don't just throw it away. I give it away, hoping that it delights somebody. Um, you know, like that, like trying to get every last little bit of value out of every moment uh, distracts you from those moments that don't have uh, apparent immediate value, but are uh, taking a breath and a reset button. Man, we were just talking about this on a, about a comic we were both discussing where uh, so like you know the st storytelling should take a breath every once in a while and so too should we take breaths every once in a while you know um yeah you're right um the the uh uh what are we what are it's yeah how do you get the experience of of those um of those breaths of those moments um and if if um if what you're valuing in your tasks is um is industriousness at all at all costs right mm -hmm. um so so that i mean which is one of the reasons why like i i like to journal i like to journal in different forms i have um uh i've been um you, like let's see what recently um i started yeah um i started drinking more more water and mm -hmm. um yeah what um how that happened was uh i uh i i let's see i had a uh oh what do you want to call it um what do i want to call it a there are times when you notice like how you're feeling health wise. And, um, I, I noticed that I wasn't, uh, you know, feeling that great, um, a few weeks ago. And I, um, you know, reading and researching, I thought, um, like one of the reasons is I, I, I don't drink an, enough water. Right. And, uh, uh, it's, it's was it was, um, 
uh, it's one of those things where you're like, well, I, you know, should I get, should I get more exercise? Should I get more sleep? You know, probably, but do I need it today? I don't know. Um, but it, you know, then realizing that, that, um, you know, I actually, I actually think I do need this today. How do I, um, uh, how do I change this habit? Um, well, I need some, a better kind of feedback loop. So I better start, um, um, journaling this, this habit better. And I, I also should, um, uh, set myself up if, uh, like, like mentally or with reminders that, um, uh, with, um, let's see, that help me, um, let's see, are you still there, there, Jersey? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, different setup. I, uh, can't see you. Um, I, I had your Tumblr pulled up on the screen. I figured you were going to talk about that pretty soon. So yeah, I don't know if you could... so, so, so the, the, um, I ended up getting, um, I, I ended up getting, uh, uh, two tumblers that, that are, there were 10, 10 bucks each. And, um, it, it's, it's basically, um, one, um, fourth of what I need, what I need to drink in the day. And, um, so I drink, um, I drink four of them. I keep one of the tumblers at work. I keep one of the tumblers at home and, uh, it's, uh, it's a good one. And like, for me, I think, um, and you know, when, when you start analyzing problems, uh, I was like, uh, it is what I'm, is what I'm using to, to, to consume water every day, part of the problem. Right. And I thought, well, maybe, and, and I have a, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I have, I have a few, I mean, I mean, tumblers around that, um, you, that had, uh, some, some friction as far as the, um, you know, consuming water and stuff. So, uh, the Bubba tumbler has like, it has, it, it's really, I don't know. I was able to drink a lot of water out of it. And, uh, when I, when I tried it after a few days, I, w I first, I thought I have to drink four of these in a day. What, how am I going to get through that? And, um, uh, then it got, it got easier. It, it, uh, and it got easier pretty fast. Right. And that's, that's, that's a signal that that habit was probably, you know, that was, that was needed. And my, my body was, uh, you know, adjusting, uh, adjusting pretty quick to the, to the new water situation. So anyway, that's the Bubba uh, NVS insulated stainless steel tumbler with straw. Yeah. Is it, is it uh, dishwasher safe? I'm very lazy when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, uh, yes, it is. It has proven to be dishwasher safe. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. should probably drink more water too. Um, it's um, yeah. It's it's funny. Uh, I mean, I, it's a. You know, what about um? Physical. I mean, I mean, are you? I at least. What are you uh, working on for for nourishment or? Uh, uh well, how about we save that for final thought? Because I feel like we're at that at that time where we should probably be doing final thought. Um, what do you think? Yeah. I okay. like it, and we'll talk about what we're what we're thinking about trying next. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna take a minute and thirty seconds or so, and we're going to uh, talk about some other people who make the show possible. Those people happen to be us. We introduced ourselves as uh, people who make things and think hard about making things. And we'd like to take this opportunity to point you at some of the things that we make. First one up is uh, Science Comics Rockets, a graphic novel that I worked on with my wife, Anne. Comes out June 12th, 2018. It's up for pre-order now on Amazon. Uh, and I think it's up for pre-order on, on most book services. So if you use something like, um, like uh, local, you know, your local bookseller, you can pre-order it from there as well. Um, what's it about? It's the logline is 
Carl Sagan's Cosmos as told by grumpy animals. So uh, we have all these stories of like, how, you know, the physics of rockets, how rockets propel themselves, how the engines work and everything, how the guidance systems work. But then we also tell these stories of the people who develop these different technologies. Like Robert Goddard was like one of the first people to come along to do liquid fuel rockets. And we find these stories of how animals were involved in, in these um, rocket developments. And when the host of that chapter discovers that their species was used in rocket development, they promptly get angry and walk off the, the set and then other animals come on. Uh, it's sort of like, I would say it's like a little bit like a Muppet show kind of thing as well. Um, but yes, at the end of the book, you will have a working knowledge of, of the physics of rockets, how rockets work, and you'll even have some really wonderful trivia stories like, for instance, did you know the first living beings from Earth to orbit the moon were not the Apollo 8 crew, but it was two Russian tortoises. It's true, and we show the training sequence in the book. Uh, Science Comics Rockets from First Second Publishing out in June. Uh, if you have pre-ordered it, please tell your friends. Uh, it'd be cool if this book was really successful. Rob, you made a game. Yeah, this the, the game is called uh, This this Panda Needs You. And um, so what the, the situation is, uh, you get to play with, um, like, stacking blocks and shapes and pattern matching and it, it's all in the service of helping this little panda um who who keeps encountering like a bunch of different patterns and but what happens is the patterns are fine when when you show up and a cloud comes along and knocks them down every single time and you're like what's 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 with you cloud this is but sisyphean yeah. Oh no, I, I just dropped the blocks. Yep. There's physics in this game, Rob. <laughs> yeah, the, the um it's 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 yeah, pattern matching and physics and uh, you're working you're working with um, these the the different shapes that that he, and, and different colors that you get, get get introduced over like, you know, 50 different levels. It gets pretty challenging near the end. And uh, but it's it's really an an, an all ages game meant to um, you know be easy to pick up and uh and relaxing to you know play as this panda encourages you to keep keep playing and you can learn more about it at this-panda.com this-panda.com if you have already purchased it please uh give it a review and on whatever platform you purchased it or tell your friends about it it's in the itunes app store and it's on stitch.io mm -hmm. uh, for android too yes yeah, it's I, I, iPhone and iPad, um, Android and Android and phones and tablets, and uh, desktops. Um, your your Mac OS and Windows. Neat. All right, and if you if you uh, are here mostly because you like the way we think about things rather than way than the stuff we make, that's fine. You can get products based on the way we think about things at leanintoart.com slash workshops where you can download a self-contained video series at a price of your choosing. That price can even be zero. But if you do get some value out of it, a cool thing you could do is go back, purchase it, quote unquote, again, and then uh, you can always share that one with a friend. That'd be like a way of giving us a tip and helping out uh, somebody that you know who might get something out of my comics workshops, Rob's video game and UI workshops. It's at leanintoart.com slash workshops a free thing you can do right now if you're watching this video on youtube give it a thumbs up if you think that the the content we make is valuable that helps more people find the show if you're listening to the show in a podcatcher like uh apple podcasts or whatever uh giving us a five-star rating wherever you listen to uh the show helps more people find it as well we thank everybody who's been doing exactly that it means a lot to us yes it does thank you all right so. rob time for final thought final thought oh what things we want to take on next i i already i have a hands down easy answer for that um i have been successful in recent weeks of incorporating some kind of almost daily exercise in my life which is not always the easiest thing to do um i recently did a live stream for my patreon supporters for the boulder and fleet comic and I was talking about how like I've achieved this level of flexibility in my schedule where uh, because I have like a completely mobile rig now, my VIOZ canvas, I can like I can work anywhere. So like if I'm like in between classes for a couple hours, I don't have to rush home to try to work. I can just work where I am. So that means that like the four hours I need a day to draw can happen in a lot of places, which means that I'm very flexible to let other things intrude in that, which means that some things are always going to fall off the plate. I don't have this sacred time where it's like, no, this is the time that I do running or working out or whatever. Right. Um, 
but I've been successful at fitting it someplace in each day. Um, but that kind of jello like schedule that I've been maintaining, uh, has not been friendly to me incorporating some kind of 20 to 30 minute thing where I'm just breathing, meditating, having a moment to collect myself so that I'm showing up to things more attentive and alert. Um, that's the thing I would like to incorporate more of. And, and I'm beginning to wonder if the flexibility of my schedule is the, is the thing that needs addressing. Like I need to make some like sacred blocks of time that nobody touches these, right? Um, but gosh almighty being really flexible is really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, that seems incredibly, um, like, like a, there's, it's hard to knock down. It, it seems like it would be hard to knock down your schedule, right? Where, um, of like things, things popping up events and stuff that, um, you know, um, aren't recurring sudden things. It, it, it over, overall, like you're, you've, um, it's, it's, it's resilient to like, so like, like a jello, jello can take different shapes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, that's, well, that's, I... yeah. Um, I, yeah, my schedule is, is, uh, not, not, not as, uh, not so jello. Um, and, uh, that, that's, but let's see, but it has like, uh, some, some chaos and some, some, uh, the, and, and some stable, stable recurrence and some, uh, and lots of blocked known, known recurring things. And, uh, it's. It's, it's so funny. And, and, uh, so with, let's see, you're, you're, um, uh, so your, your exercise with, with that, that your, your kind of schedule is, um, it's, it's, it's been a, um, it's been a success that, um, that you're looking to expand into the, like having the, the, the quiet times, like, like so med yeah. meditation. Yeah. Okay. Finding more quiet time. Hmm. Um, what about, um, okay. So, okay. So for me, I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to get more sleep and, um, have greater awareness of my, uh, my heart rate over time. And, uh, and also like the, the drinking more water thing is, is fairly new. Um, it's about, I don't know, 10, 10 days old or whatever. Right. Oh, um, that's very new. Yeah. And, um, uh, I, I think what, what, um, yeah, the, the puzzle is like getting more sleep it's, it works, it works overall. I've been, uh, been tracking, I've been tracking my sleep and, um, uh, my heart rate with a couple of apps for the last, um, three months or so. And, um, and then, you know, starting out with the Apple watch, uh, the series one, but then, you know, recently upgrading in the last, I don't know, was it, was it, um, eight weeks ago or so to the, um, to the Apple watch three. Um, the, the, um, yeah, so I'm using an app called uh, heart watch and auto sleep. Um, and, uh, I I'm just, I'm discovering, so I'm getting new data from that. I, I, years ago, I, I know we talked about it on the show, um, where I was using an, uh, an app that ran on my iPhone that I would lay my iPhone on the bed and I would, uh, I track my, track my sleep that way. But I, and, but I've never had like, like easy, um, heart, heart, um, uh, tracking ex except for like the, um, yeah, the, the I Apple, the, the, the Apple watch first generation would, would, 
um, it would, it was a lo, not as, um, it's, it wasn't as high powered as the, as the Apple watch three. And, um, it, it would take, it, it would take heart rate. It would be very, um, slow and less, less, less frequent. Whereas the, the three is more, is more reliable. And I can, I can, uh, um, and I can wear the three when I sleep. So that's, that's just a huge difference. Um, now, you know, the question is, is, um, you know, looking, looking back at that data and, and making something of it. And, um, and the, the, the apps I'm using for this are, are, uh, you know, HeartWatch, both, both by the same company and AutoSleep. Um, and we'll see, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see what, um, what I, what I do with that. Um, any guesses as to what you might find out? Um, so like that, like, oh my God, I have heart disease, but I mean, like, like what, what, what kind of like, uh, assumptions do you have in terms of like what you could gather or what you could like act on from this data that you're collecting? Um, so let's see. So moving more, um, it's, it's a, it's a signal. It's a feedback mechanism with like, we've, we talked about, um, like, you know, the, the earlier times of the trend of, um, what it, were the, the, uh, oh, putting, um, oh, putting a lot of data into, into your everyday and like instrumenting as much as you, you, you can, we've, you know, um, and, uh, this is, uh, what I hope to get out of that is, um, The, my, I don't know. Um, <laughs> better. Well, I mean, that, yeah. That's perfectly legit a answer. Is right. Like maybe it's like I don't know yet. When I start to see some patterns emerge, maybe then I'll start to come up with some ideas of what I can do with this information. But yeah, patterns. Ab, ab, yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the patterns are. Um, it's hard where you, where you say I see the data where I I don't get sleep, and I'm like I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, six hours. I don't know about that. <laughs> yep. So, I don't know. And are you capturing like your any anything about like how well you sleep in your journaling, like like qualitative data as well as? Yeah. Um, occasionally, um, I will be, uh, you know, dreaming near near when I wake up. And I will um, uh, just I'll, I'll throw a quick note um, that that does not um, typically capture the um, the wildness or the details or the the um, sort of the the big chain of events of a dream, but I can capture a couple things, and um, that gives me a flavor for what that that was like. And plus, I'll just say like, and this is what it felt like. Um, mm -hmm. If and and uh, that's uh, uh, and and if so, if I and I reflect on my journal stuff. I'm like deeply about once a year, and uh, in and and occasionally throughout the year. And that's let's see. So day one. Um, Day one is is the app that I use for for journaling, and one of the things I like about it is that it reminds me to to look at it. And I've been using it for enough years, where um, it it's it becomes like this this uh, it becomes a well well of information, and it's um, but it's only got what I what I remember to write in there. Uh, but I've used it for I th I think like six or eight years now. And um, like, not, not quite that long. I mean, like, but almost as long as we've been doing this podcast. And um, which is like, I think it'd be seven years in August. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, um, the, so day one will be, will be like, you have five entries on this day from, you know, and just, uh, just remind me that I have that. 
And so that's, I'm like, I have five entries on this day over what, you know, like a couple will be from, from one year and then like maybe like, like two years before that and one year before, you know, so over the course. And uh, it's, it's fascinating. So whatever, that, that's, uh, that's handy. Yeah, well, and it's that that seems like there's a lot of data altogether to help you get a really clear sense of a clear third party sense. It's literally standing outside of yourself, right? To get a sense of what's happening to you in the moment after the fact, to make some more informed decisions down the road, how to course correct, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, that's 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 um that's what I'm knowing I'm putting myself in the position of for getting getting the more data about uh heart rate and sleep and uh water consumption great um okay well i think we did a show don't you yeah i think so um <laughs> Yeah, we, we we definitely this is uh I don't know. It was it's a lot to uh yeah, nour nourishing and recharging can uh uh I yeah, I I guess it's a it's a it's a sensitive topic I I think. It it's a sensitive and it's a rich topic. I feel like we should get some guests on with us to talk about that as well get some more points of view and you know different approaches to so. this thing um i feel like it's we could do like a month of like this topic with just different guests right um yeah and uh and and honestly like some of the things that we mentioned like dig, we could dig deeper into uh art drops that'd be a very um good potential uh topic with a guest mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Art that's meant to be given away and never seen again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What happens to that art? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like, what purpose does it really serve? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Um, lots more to, to discuss in the weeks to come. But in the meantime, this show is recorded every week, Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central, streamed live on YouTube. And collect it as a podcast after the fact at patreon.com slash lean into art. And uh, thank you, Rob, for this discussion. Thanks, everybody in the chat, hanging out and, and interacting with us. Yeah, thank and, you, Jersey. Uh, and thanks. And uh, until next time, everybody, I've been Jersey Droz of leanintoart.com and Jersey Droz on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and Rob Stenzinger also on Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening. All right, I'm going to shut off the stream. Thanks, everybody. Good night.